Okay, well, last time we talked about if, if you have four system, a couple of force on a moment, uh, in theory, how we can actually make them combine and just replace them with a single force um, for a single moment. Or in general case like that, if I have a system of force and I want to move them around, I can move the force around. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple of examples of can do that. First example like this. So, so I assume this is what I have. This is what I have. Uh, I want to replace this entire three forces and replace it with a single force at one point. Okay. So I have three forces. One vertical, one going down, and one going up. This three. I want to get these three and replace them. Uh, and five. And replace these three with a single force at point O. So the first step when we want to work with this kind of step, the first step I have to go and find all the x and y components of that forces. Go ahead, try to find the x and y component. So here, the fourteen Newton is already vertical, so I don't need to do anything with that. This one, so it's going to be three kilonewton for sine theory. This one is going to be three kilonewton. This one and this one. So here, if I have, I assume that's the alpha, that angle is alpha. So sine alpha here would be kilo. Sine. Because I mean, 
same thing. The same? Zero for five. Zero for five? Cosine is always next to the angle. Yeah. Sine is the one that is away. Yeah. We have that triangle. Yeah. The problem. So instead of giving us the angle, they give the, the, that triangle is given. So now that I have that, I will go ahead and say, okay, I want to break everything on point O. Okay. Don't we need to worry about the um, y-axis or x-axis of the four kitten units? Because like, yeah, it is parallel to the O, but it is um, not centered with it. And so it is uh, able to rotate. That's OK. So the first step, what we want to do is that find them parallel in the x and so y, find the component in the x and y axis. That's, that's the first step. So, because this one doesn't have any x component, oh, we are not going yeah, to work. Yeah, that's too much for the projection. So, if I go ahead and write the sigma of x, so I want to see uh, how much force I have in the x direction. So, what I have in the x direction, I have this, 3000 cosine 30. I have this by Any other forces in the x direction? So it's going to be positive if I have it right. 5598 Newton and go and toward the right. So the sine theta is equal to three fifths. It's like they're complete, they're interchangeable. Yeah. All right. Good. So this is sine alpha. So right. instead of sine alpha, the newton, and instead of sine alpha, I can write three over five. And here for cosine alpha, I can say five the newton, four over five. Yeah, for some reason I thought you had to still like to plug those into the equation. But like you do cosine of three over five to get that, but that gives you angles. You can go and find an angle and again use it backward. It just was the feeling. It gives you the same thing. So then I, I'm going to have the sigma of y is, and in the y direction, and I have these 3,000 going up, sign 30, and then the 4,000 going down. And these things that 5,000 times.
thousand up, four thousand down, and five thousand also down. And if there are any losses, I will negative. So now I can go ahead and say, hey, so I'm gonna, I want to, that one to be equal to the period. It's the same thing. At the point O. So if I go ahead and put that, these two forces there, so if I go there and say, I'm gonna have. Now I want to find its direction, so I just want to go ahead and say, okay, this is the theta. So then the tangent of theta. So, five hundred or five eight. This would give us forty nine point three. So, so 
So I reduce that system of force. I have three forces and I reduce them to the single force. But are these two equal? Yeah. The forces, the, the thing that at the moment, the forces are equal. The forces here and the forces here are equal. The same effect. But the moment is not equal. There, there are going to be different moments. So, by moving, so look at here. Let's assume I take the moment at what point? So, this one rotate clockwise, this one rotate clockwise, this one. Okay, counterclockwise, correct? Mm -hmm. So I have some moment. How much moment do I have about going for right now? Zero. Zero. But that force passed through the point O. So whatever moment I had here about point O, I reduced it to zero. So I have to compensate for that. The amount of the moment that I have, I had here, and I don't have them here anymore. So how to do that is that I will go ahead and calculate how much moment I had here at what point O, and just put it on point O there. So I got it? So I calculate all the moment I have at what point O, and then I will come and put it on the point O, so they are going to be equal. So the next step is that I have to find all the sigma m at what point O, and assume the contact. So the forces I have are started, for example, from the top. So I have 3,000 uh, sign here. Yeah. And how much is the D? Two. So the D is just two from here to there. Positive or negative? Positive. Yeah, positive. So the positive. The next one is the three thousand cosine thirty. This one. Three thousand cosine thirty. The D right, the slide is here. The distance is 0.1. So it's going to be 0.1. Oh, these are 0 0.2, sorry. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It's going to be 0 0.2. 0 0 0.2, 0.1. Positive or negative? Negative. Negative. So it's going to, it's clockwise. So if I the slide it here, Protect clockwise about the board, so it's going to be negative. Then I will come to, let's do it with this one. So if it was 5,000, it's going to be 5,000 times 3 over 5. Distance or the uh, the other one four over five, so it's going to look like the same for the top, top one, the vertical one. Let's do this one. So it's five thousand times four over five, and the vertical distance, and the normal distance, is point two plus point three. Point two plus point three. Positive, negative. Now we go to the horizontal one, which is 5 times 10 to the 3. 3 over 5. And so this one, so we 
normal distance that I just slide it over here again it's gonna be point positive or negative so if I slide that force here it's gonna rotate counterclockwise it's gonna be positive and the last force is that four thousand that have the four thousand and the normal distance between 4,000 and the O is just point two. Positive, negative? Negative. Same thing. Clockwise, negative. <coughs> point two. It's going to be negative. So then the entire thing, if you add this up, we have it. So it comes out as to. So that is the amount of moments I originally had before I moved the forces. When I moved the forces, those moments come, became zero. So I have to put that moment back to get that force. So this is negative 2460, means that it rotates. It rotates clockwise. It rotates clockwise. It means that it is equal to 2400 Newton meter. Which way? Clockwise. This way. Right? So I can go there and put that moment there. 
Okay, so we have that, and then again, we want to bring the entire things on point to be mounted at the point of. So, so similar to the previous one, the first step is that you go ahead and find all the components and what the X and Y uh, fit. So again, so the 750 is already in the x, y direction, 200 is already in the x, 200 is already in the x. But this one, again, I'm going to assume, call this alpha. So how much would be the cosine alpha? This is alpha. Now I can go ahead and find it. these two forces, so it's going to be this angle is going to be 500 cosine alpha or 500 uh, three over five. And this one's going to be 500 sine alpha. So now I have all the forces in the x and y direction. So I can go and say, this is my fx in the x direction. So I have that 500 times 3 over 5 plus 200 minus 200. Which gives me. So if I go ahead and say this one is going to be equal to the same thing. I'm going to just put them here. It's going to be 300 to the right and 350 non point. So 
So now I have to go and find the resultant force because I want to replace it with a single force. The resultant force. And then the angle, sometimes inverse of y over sigma x, which would be sometimes inverse of 350 100, and k probably. So again, so I replaced all these four forces with a single force. But so in case of the forces, they are equal. But in case of the moment, again, they are not equal. So I have to go ahead and find the moment. So I have to come here, find all the moment that I have here about point O, because here moment about point O is zero. So I have to find out all the moments about point O and then put it there to compensate for the moment that I lost when I moved all the forces to a single point. So sigma n, about point O, considering counterclockwise positive, would be equal to, so I start from the Distance is 1.25, so that's the normal distance, and it's rotating counterclockwise, so it's going to be positive. Then the next one I have is 500. Plus 1.25. Is it important that we keep it separate or can we combine it as just 250? You can combine it 250. I just write it like yeah. that. So, it's, so you know, when you read it later on, you know where that 250 came from. Then I have this 200. I can consider it as a couple and then just move to the 200 times 1 and then move it here. So the couple is a free moment. Mm -hmm. So one way of doing that is uh, 200 times one and move it over, or just calculate it one by one. I'm gonna just calculate it one by one. So for the top one, it's 200, and the distance, the normal distance, I bring it here, it's gonna be half of that, so it's 0.5. 
And if I bring it here, it rotates counterclockwise, so it's positive. Plus 200, the same thing for the bottom one, so 200. The distance half and against counterclockwise. Um, or as, as I said, I could have considered it as a couple, so it was 200 times more. So if we add them all together, it comes out to negative 37.5 or other word. Now they are equal. So again, I have one, two, three, four forces. To bring that all to a single point, you can simply plug it. Any question? Next thing is that I'm going to just, so that was a simplification, so bring the forces to one point. Then we want to see how we can further simplify uh, the forces. So, First case scenario is that if I have like this, there are going to be four forces at one moment. Four, four. 
forces applying on that. And then there's a point there. Because say that all the forces pass through that point. So still my have still that there is the I can't find a point that all the forces pass through that. What I can say is that okay, this one can be equal so I can bring them all to point O and just put the FR okay, whatever is the angle of the FR so I assume the angle of the force so in other words, if all of my forces, if all of my forces intersect in one point, I can simplify the entire system to a single force at that point without any moment. Why? Because right now, if I take a moment about point O, the moment about point O is zero, because all of them pass through below that point. So if I bring the entire force system at the O, I don't need to bring any moment to that point. So remember in the previous one, we reduce it to the single force and the single moment. Now we are reducing it only to the single force. No moment. So that's the first case that if, if I can find the point that everything intersected. What if I cannot find the point that everything intersects? What, what if that my forces are in a way that they are not inter not all of them intersect at one point? For example, let's assume the second case that my object, and this time at the point O, but the forces. One of, it, it just doesn't mean that none of it, that just if one of them doesn't intersect there, that's enough. So if I go there and say, okay, this time I have this one, I have this one, that's what I have. This one, I have. So, for sure they are not going to intersect at the single point, if I, so each of them has its own line of action. So, there is no single point that they are going to intersect. Correct? So, if I bring them to the point O, what happens? So I know they are not going to intersect at point O, but I'm going to just so oh, at any point. So I'm going to bring them at, to the point O. So assume this time I have this FR and also I have the moment. So like the previous one, if I move them to the point O, I have to compensate for the moment. So it's going to be one force and one moment. Clear up to you? Now I want to get rid of that moment. Because that's the plan. We could have done it up to here previously. We want to get the rid of moment, only have the single force. So how we do that? 
side. I'm going to move the FR, so if this is the original point over here. I'm going to move the FR in a way that the FR itself can generate an MR for me. About point O. I have that. I have MR about point O. If I move F to the points that it itself generate that, then I don't need this anymore. So if I go ahead and say, assume that so I'm bringing the FR here. So what do I want here? I want the, the moment I move it, the force here. I want its moment be equal to the MR. So, so what I mean that, so I want that the, the moment of that FD created, so it's the FD, I want it to be equal to MR about point O. So the D would be MR about point O divided by So if I move that force to that new position, if I move it from here to this new position, then it's going to be a single force, no more moment. Because that force itself creates the MR about point two. Got it? So first case, everything meets each other. Intersect, so we move all of them to the intersection. Second point, they are not intersect, so we move them to the point, we, we replace it with a single force and a single moment, then we move the resultant force around until we get rid of that moment. Simple cases in 3D. So, assume I have so in the 3D format, so assume I have So I have this plate and there's a point O. So this is a 2D again, now I go to 3D and the point O is there and this is going to be the Z axis. So as long as we have three forces applied there, Parallel to the D axis, so now F1, F2, and F3. Parallel to the D axis. 
Now, I, again, the same thing. I want to replace them with a single force. So the first step, what was that? Like that. Bring everything to that point O. If I bring everything to point O, what will happen? The moment is going to be about an axis because the 2D, the moment will be about an axis. So, assume the axis of the moment would be slow. So, this is the axis of the axis of the moment. At the moment, we are going to have the moment about the point. It's going to be m r about that axis. Or m r about that. Again, remember that's the that's the moment vector. So it's rotating like that about that axis. And not dry but can versus dry like that about that axis. Now that I have a force and moment, I want to move that force around until I get I can get the rid of that point. In other words, I want to move it around until the that force itself create the MR about that axis. So then they are, don't need that moment anymore. So that's how we are going to do that. So I'm going to have that thing. So you move it to the new point. I will move it to the new point in a way that it generates that FR. I move it to the new point that if I have the same axis AA, look at here. One, one second, look at here. So, if I move it here, it generates a moment about the axis, like that. 
So it generates the same moment I already have. So I move it, move it, move it, move it until it generates the same moment I have it here. I leave it there. So then it's going to be reduced.